And I am so pleased to be introducing to you Tracy Reddies. Uh, Tracy joined Science World as president and CEO in 2020, an interesting year to start a new job. She was inspired by Science World's mission to ignite wonder and empower dreams through science and nature. She's passionate about disseminating STEAM learning to more people than BC. And she, as we do, believes these skill sets are going to be key to BC's and Canada's future success. Tracy spent much of her career leading complex financial institutions. She was the CEO of Coast Capital Savings Credit Union and before that EVP and head of personal finance services at HSBC. In 2017, she joined the BC Liberal Party as MLA for Surrey White Rock and she served as the finance critic for the opposition. So she's got a rich and varied background and in a fantastic job today. Uh, we're thrilled to have her join us. Welcome, Tracy. Thanks so much, Jill. I'm delighted to be here. So I always like to start off these conversations by just opening it up to you a little bit and tell us a little bit about your background. And I guess my question would be, how does a banker become the CEO of Science World? <laughs> uh, well, it's maybe not the most uh, normal of journeys, but I guess, you know, simply it's curiosity probably. Um, I've always been a big uh, subscriber to the Robert Frost poem, The Road Not Taken, and two roads diverge in a wood, and I took the one less traveled by, and that's made all the difference. And that's actually uh, has guided uh, a lot of my uh, career uh, choices, I think, uh, from banker to politician to uh, now um, CEO of uh, Science World. But it's actually, it's not as, um, as weird as you might think. Uh, you mentioned uh, I was finance critic. Um, I got a chance to look at a lot of the financial uh, and fiscal challenges that are facing the province. And of course, one of those is something that BC Tech has mentioned many times that with the aging baby boomers, we're looking at job vacancies, you know, in the 90,000 range. Um, but we also, I used to say to our caucus, we, we have the costs and of, of a, a New York and LA, but we have the average wages of an Omaha, Nebraska. And the only way for us to, uh, you know, continue to increase GDP and um, to improve average wages is, is to increase uh, the number of people who are working in knowledge intensive industries. So I had been looking at that uh, for, as a policy um, platform uh, opportunity for the BC Liberals and that actually suggested that we uh, actually work to create uh, technology centers of excellence around the, the province that would be supported by a host of, uh, of uh, key tax and finance and educational uh, policies to support that type of development. So I'd already been looking at that and then when I was tapped on the shoulder to uh, put my name in the hat for the CEO of Science World, I saw the, the, the vision and mission and I did my background research and uh, I realized that Science World is a really important cog in that talent pipeline um, by educating uh, young people early and starting to get that uh, curiosity and wonder of science happening uh, early. So uh, again, you know, looking at it um, from, from my perspective uh, with our purpose and mission, I can't think of a better place for me to be right now uh, than with an organization that's really focused on helping British Columbia. Well, we're delighted to have you in that role and partnering in this way. So much of what you're saying is music to my ears. So. But what was it like at a personal level to join an organization like Science World, I mean, what an empowering and exciting vision, but at such a challenging time. So what was it like to join the organization in 2020 in the midst of COVID? Well, it, it was, I mean, obviously it's been a very challenging time for um, Science World as like, like most attractions. I mean, my, you know, my, for me, I mean, obviously I've come into it seeing what it's like in a pandemic. Um, I, I've been so worried, you know, for my staff who've been here many years, who've watched us, you know, uh, uh, you know, reduce our numbers and, and really take some big hits. But I've also seen them do amazing things. And, um, you know, we we are really doing a lot more in the online space now. We've really pivoted to being almost overnight an online organization. 
when they when the pandemic hit and the institution our institution was closed and many schools and uh, and other uh, educational uh, learning uh, places we realized that in order for us to continue our our purpose and mission we had to get our programs and our content online and so we've really pivoted uh, that way um, so we we are now seeing about two hundred twenty five thousand visits uh, um, uh, per month uh, to Science World on our websites. Um, and this year, um, I, I may just back up, in 2019, our best year, uh, we reached 140,000 uh, students and teachers with our online, or sorry, our, our STEAM programs, and we had about a million people come through the site. This year, we're going to reach about 3 million people, um, uh, probably only about 200,000 through the, um, uh, you know, the on-site attraction. Uh, the balance will come through our online programs, uh, online content, our kit-based science. And so this this is a, I think, a, in, in some respects, it's been an eye-opening uh, opportunity for Science World because our purpose is to scale STEAM literacy. And if we want to scale uh, something, with the online channels represent, you know, significant opportunity for us. So we've started to do that. We have a program called uh, Girls in STEAM that uh, we um, uh, target uh, 11 to 13 year old uh, girls who are interested in STEAM. And uh, normally we would bring them to the dome for a day long work workshop. Uh, 300, uh, you, know, you know the program very well. So we'd have 300 people into the dome. This year we couldn't do that, but we put it online and we reached 2,500 girls. So that's the power of pivoting. And I think, you know, going forward, uh, the online space is gonna be a really big important part of our, uh, our organization. It's really interesting to explore what science world is, right? I think we're all, my, my daughter's now eight, but I remember in, in uh, the preschool years, and even now she still bugs me, when can we go to Science World again? Um, <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> right? It's, so it's such a beloved attraction, especially for families, <clears throat> but that isn't all that you do. So maybe just help uh, our audience understand some of the less obvious things you were talking talking about some of the work that you do with educators and the work you do with girls and encouraging them to pursue STEAM, but it's actually quite a large part of what you do now. It is probably um, probably about 50% of our work is actually uh, educating um, students and teachers in the province. Um, and again, most of that used to be sort of on site or physical outreach to, to schools across the province. Uh, but now we're increasingly doing it online and, and uh, making it available actually to uh, you know, many more people around the province. So it's, it's a really, it's, it's, a, it's a good opportunity. And I think you know, going forward, we're going to be uh, what we're calling an omni-channel hybrid uh, organization, um, one that basically can provide STEAM learning anytime, anywhere, through any channel that our visitors and members want to interact with us in. And uh, I think that's, you know, that's what the power of the online space has shown us. We still know that um, Science World is still a very important attraction um, for people to come and, and see. And, uh, and we know, um, again, all of the, the work that we do is about igniting that wonder and passion around STEAM, that curiosity around science. Uh, so we want to start that early and leverage every channel in our means to make sure that British Columbians all over the province have uh, access to that, that STEAM type learning. The other critical piece that we do is we train a lot of uh, teachers in, in how to deliver STEAM content, whether it's coding or, uh, or uh, you know, how to uh, engage uh, five-year-olds in uh, how to, you know, create a little volcano and <laughs> blow up the classroom. Uh, but no, not quite, but, but uh, you know, we, we, we do train uh, a lot of teachers. And, and I think one of the challenges and opportunities we have in the province is that our, a lot of our ele elementary school teachers are generalists. Um, and, you know, if we want to really grow that pipeline, we really need to make sure that we have trained, confident teachers in front of um, the children because they will be able to ignite that passion and that desire to continue learning. So all of this is, I mean, it's a very important ecosystem. And like I said, I'm, I just, I'm thrilled that I'm, I'm a part of it right now. It's, yeah, it's, it's one of the things that we found when we, we launched our professional development days for teachers, for K-12 teachers, and to be honest, we expected that we'd have more secondary school teachers participating. It's actually uh, often the primary grades. Yes. And it's, they're attracted by the same thing kids are attracted by, that sense of igniting wonder and learning by doing and hands-on. And, and uh, what I like to say to people is, if you want to never lose 
that sense of curiosity and wonder and passion about what you do, then come on over and join the tech sector. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course. I mean, the tech sector is, I mean, it the, the whole knowledge economy, I mean, that's what's changing our lives. I, I you know, in general, I think for the better. Um, although when I, you know, get texts at uh, two o'clock in the morning, I'm not sure if that's a, <laughs> a thing for the better. But but honestly, I mean, you know, the uh, our, our, our future as a province and a country is so dependent on us having a stream of talented innovators, um, you know, because if we don't have that talent, it, uh, you know, the co companies and uh, will go elsewhere and your survey, you know, suggested that. And, you know, I, I just would love to see BC at the forefront of that change and in helping initiate that change as opposed to being pummeled by it. And I think, you know, it's really important for um, all of us who are part of this ecosystem, businesses, educational institutions, government, you know, all work um, collaboratively to figure out what's the best way to keep this pipeline going and, and increase it. Cause uh, we certainly aren't graduating enough uh, uh, esteem um, uh, graduates uh, in, in the province as of yet. Perfect. Well, this is a great opportunity for me to just remind my audience that uh, the chat is open. Uh, please feel free to add your questions for Tracy. I've got a few more, but also any observations that you might have on some of the topics that are coming up today. If you've got ideas on how we could uh, expand interest in STEAM and expand interest in, and talent coming into the tech sector, we'd really love to hear it. So don't, don't hold back. Um, Tracy, just returning to some of the, the questions that I have for you about what this last year has been like. Um, you're super passionate. You are a glasses half full person. I know that. Um, but I wonder if it might be appropriate just for us to take a moment and talk about how challenging this year has been for Science World and the scale of the challenges that you're facing. Because you're talking to an audience here that's passionate about your organization and we'd love to help if we can. So, so tell us about what's been difficult and then we'll return to our previously scheduled programming that is wildly optimistic. Well, as you, you, you guessed, I, I always like to talk about opportunities more than I like to talk about challenges in some respects. But, but yeah, no, it's been a very difficult time. I mean, we're, um, you know, Science World is a nonprofit uh, organization. We've been self-funding uh, pretty much for the last uh, decade. Um, less than 2% of our funding actually comes from government. Uh, which is a problem, uh, particularly now. So for, for having been have, having had a successful business model uh, and not needing government support that much, we actually were in worse situation coming into this pandemic because 85% of our revenues um, came from gate attendance or ancillary um, revenues like parking and, and, and that. So when you're um, you have no attendance or your attendance is like 25, uh, 20 to 30 percent of what you're normally getting, it's it's a very, very difficult science world will lose about two million dollars this year um, and will um, uh, will have gone through about three million in cash because we've also had to. Um, we've also had to uh, sever uh, employees, unfortunately, that we just didn't have work for. So it, very, very challenging time. And I think one of the things that, you know, really keeps me up at night is, uh, you know, I, I know this year is going to continue to be difficult, but it should get better. But, ha but at the end of it, um, we will have depleted our reserves substantially and, and our ability to reinvest in the needed uh, programming, the exhibits, the um, new technologies, even um, reskinning the dome, which is a $12 million exercise. Uh, and, and by the way, if anybody has any uh, good knowledge out there on how to reskin a, uh, a, a geodesic dome, we'd really like to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, all these things are, are putting, um, you know, pretty big obstacles in front of Science World's ability to remain relevant. And frankly, I want to grow Science World into being a, a world class, multifaceted science center that um, that is not just oriented to, you know, small children, but basically are the whole gamut of the population, you know, who are interested in, in learning about, uh, you know, STEAM and uh, we can't do that, um, you know, without the uh, without the community and, and without government support. Yeah, well, I applaud your your ambition and you, I share it and I support you in that. And I, but I just would emphasize we have to make sure that you get through 
this pandemic whole and that you're in a position to stabilize and to continue to be an icon for our community because science world is too important for us to lose. So Thank you. I know you have the support of those of us on the call. Um, well, let's, let's assume that we are successful with that and let's turn the page and think about the future. Um, perhaps we could talk a little bit about uh, diversity and why that's so important. Because I know it's something that you and I are both passionate about, but it's something that we really haven't solved. We haven't made fast enough progress. It's an ongoing challenge. Uh, what can we do to help increase diversity in STEAM and why is it so important? Well, you know, uh, it is a, a ter tremendously important, but, but I'd argue, I guess at first, that we have to increase the number of, of, of children all, or young people going into STEAM disciplines in period. I mean, we only have, we're only graduate, 25% of our bachelor's degrees are, are um, in STEM, only 25%. And of the STEM, only 15% are women. So we, we've got huge upside opportunity here. We've just got to figure out how to, um, to do that. When it comes to underrepresented groups, this is a big focus for Science World. We're really looking at women, uh, Indigenous, LGBTQ, and then also starting to look at the uh, people with disabilities. Um, because again, if we're going to solve uh, this, this problem of this pipeline, we can't be just looking at one, one part of the uh, population. And I, I, what we believe is important is, is, is having targeted programs at an early age where kids can see um, people like themselves uh, as adults who are working in the, um, in the profession. So Girls in STEAM is one of them, uh, where we, we bring in um, mentors uh, for, for the girls too, to talk to and, uh, and work with so that they, um, again, can just develop that ongoing um, interest in, in science. Um, and again, we're increasingly looking at the Indigenous and LGBT, LGBTQ uh, 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 programs uh, similar to Girls in STEAM. So I think that's really important. Um, I, I think, you know, as we talked about, we need to train more teachers uh, in, in STEAM specialties. I mean, again, we can't have a pipeline unless we have teachers who are also excited about STEAM. Uh, and, uh, and I think, you know, that's something that government policy could help shape um, uh, and incent uh, graduating more teachers with uh, STEAM uh, skills. And then I, I think we also need to look very closely, and I, I, I can't, um, ex, you know, say that I'm an expert on this, I'm still learning, um, but there's clearly a lot of attrition um, in um, the STEAM fields and underrepresented groups. Um, primarily with women uh, and uh, they, who seem to fall off at, at certain points, they, even after they've got their, their degrees. And um, I think that's, you know, something that we really need to understand and do, you know, do we need more um, uh, support systems in the workplace, like champions of those people who are not necessarily, you know, represented fully at, at work? Uh, do we need um, specific career development programs? So I think it's, you know, it's, it's like one of those things, it's a multifaceted problem. Uh, what we're focused on at Science World is, is again, sparking that um, curiosity early, because uh, we know if you do that and you create confident STEAM learners, they'll go on to be, uh, you know, to take STEAM disciplines in high school and then uh, on uh, in university and post-secondary. Yeah, I love it. A complex, wicked problem, but the only the only false move is to not try. Exactly. Move change. So this yeah. is great. Listen, you did mention uh, you you touched on government there, and of course you you had a front row seat uh, in in the. Uh, Sometimes the I wish I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if the tomato hit you harder. Or that. <laughs> but uh, how do you think government's doing? Uh, in terms of understanding the needs of your sector or the needs of the tech sector and sort of grappling with the question of economic recovery and what the future economy is going to be looking like? What kind of letter grade would you give them? Mm, that's a tough one. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I think the government has uh, good intentions, um, whether it's our, uh, our sector or your sector. And, and I mean, obviously, everyone wants to see the economy recover. I think the challenge um, that I'm seeing with the government is the they're grappling with the pandemic and the pandemic itself seems to be kind of overtaking everything um, in government. So the 
ability to come up with, um, you know, programs or addition things on the economic side seem to be a little bit more challenged. Um, you know, I, on the tech side, I think um, I know the government is very um, interested as, as we were on the other side of seeing the whole tech sector and knowledge intensive economy um, take off for the reasons I was talking about. Uh, but I haven't really seen too many concrete policies um, that you know, in place yet. And I, I guess that's probably why Jerry Sinclair, the innovation commissioner has been um, hired and she will be focusing on that. Um, but, you know, I, I know they've, they've tried to um, increase the number of graduates in STEM. Um, they've, uh, uh, I think, uh, allocated 42 million for the next six years, but that's only tw in creating 20, 2,900 new spaces. And we have, um, you know, we have a, a, a gap of probably, you know, probably 50, 50, 60,000 when you start uh, looking at all of the retiring boomers and health sciences and everything else. So, uh, you know, I really think, and I hope Jerry is able to do this. I really think we need a, uh, you know, a, um, a provincial effort and a provincial strategy to do this that is um, that brings together the, the various stakeholders who are involved with this and and um, and we figure out what policies are needed by government um, in order to make this grow. Um, you know, from my perspective, it's a, you know, you're you're looking at tax and finance um, uh, policies. You're looking at education policies, social policies, uh, the whole gamut. And and unfortunately, what I saw in government is that government tends to operate in silos, and so these multifaceted, complex problems are often hard for them to attack. It, it becomes a bit of a piecemeal, um, uh, you know, approach, and and that's not what we need. What we need is something like they're doing in Finland, uh, where they're uh, they have a national strategy around our artificial intelligence, and it's permeating all of their government institutions, but it's also across the educational system and, and society. And I think that's if we want to make this happen, we have to think bigger. We have to think um, uh, in terms of bringing together the right people. And we have to acknowledge that it's going to take, you know, a multitude of, uh, of policy uh, work uh, to uh, make it happen. I completely agree with you. And, and that's a great example of what's happening in, in some jurisdictions around the world, or even what's happening in uh, Ontario, which is tremendously successful. There's so much we can learn from what's yeah. happening there. We've got a, a proposal that we're advocating for right now called Scale Up BC, which is very much modeled on the Scale Up Ontario program that's yeah, that's going to create a huge number of new anchor companies for Ontario. And then Alberta and Saskatchewan made some good announcements this week. So fingers crossed. Yes. Uh, as always, all of us in the ecosystem and specifically us at BC Texas stand ready and willing to partner with government and uh, tackle some of these challenges and, and come up with uh, collaborative solutions. So I see that I've got some great questions in the chat, which I'm delighted about. Um, so let's go there now, but I will encourage people, please continue to ask your questions because we've got time to take a few, but let me start with David's question. Um, it's long, so I'll just read it a little bit, but is there a role for Science World to play in getting more people seeking vaccinations? So I love that, focusing on the credibility that Science World has and the science behind vaccines. And then he broadens that out to, is there a larger role to play uh, as a spokesperson for a variety of science focused issues? And, and he lists a number of challenges there. What would you say, Tracy? Well, I, I would absolutely agree with um, David. Um, and in fact, actually, we approached the, the, the BC government to, um, uh, you know, uh, help with that education of the the public about the pandemic because um, science centers um, pretty much across the country we have about ninety percent public trust so we're really up there and again when you're talking about a situation where there's a, a lot of uh, perhaps misinformation about things it's important to get to to get the facts out um, unfortunately uh, you know again that takes programming money and um, and we weren't able to uh, do something. Uh, but I do think that um, one of our greatest opportunities as an organization going forward is, again, to bring together um, people to discuss these major issues that are facing our world, whether it's climate change, pandemics, an aging society, inequality, you know, how, how can we leverage our brand 
and trust factor to help engage the community in a dialogue um, that helps address some of these issues. And I, I, I do think that's an important role for us to play and certainly it's something that we're talking about at Science World as we come out of the pandemic. That's great to hear. Science World, not just for kids anymore. <laughs> this is where yeah. the thorny science topics are discussed. I love it. Yeah. Um, another question from Louis. Uh, can you elaborate on how kids around the province are accessing Science World programming remotely? I think you'll have a lot of people interested in that. Yeah, so um, you can go on our site. Um, we have a list of programs that are available. Um, we have we have everything from um, uh, programs that uh, you know span a few weeks to uh, online content, uh, kit based science that um, families can do with their children at home. Um, we have videos and other content, and again, it's all designed to sort of. Uh, uh, allow maximum accessibility. And we're continuing to add to that. Um, like I said, we're, um, we're actually uh, just about to uh, launch a fundraising campaign to, um, uh, to help us continue the digitization of our programs. So keep going back to our website because there'll be more and more new content being added on a, on a regular basis. But if, you've, if you're familiar with some of our um, uh, other programs, Super Science Club, Tech Up, um, uh, uh, future science leaders. Again, these are all being made um, available online as we get the, the resources to, to, to do it. Perfect. So go to the website, which is good today and better tomorrow. Exactly. We're, we're a work in progress. And uh, <laughs> Excellent. Um, okay. A question from uh, Megan at Launchpad. I'm curious if there are ways that BC Tech companies can support and come and get more involved with some of the great work that's done at Science World. So how can we help advocate? Oh, that's so, so thank you so much, Megan, for asking that, that question. Um, you know, we, we already do actually a fair amount of work with different uh, associations, including BC Tech and uh, UBC and a bunch of uh, uh, different uh, uh, companies and organizations. But uh, um, we'd like to do more. I mean, one of the things that I would like to see Science World doing is actually uh, showcasing uh, BC ingenuity and the jobs of today and the jobs of tomorrow, uh, because I, I really do think that, you know, again, we, we want to ignite that uh, that early passion in STEAM, but we also want to be able to demonstrate um, the opportunities uh, for uh, young people if they pursue um, education in, in STEAM disciplines. So, uh, you know, we we uh, we do mentoring programs with our um, with the various companies, uh, uh, the girls in STEAM, like I was talking about. Uh, we have a number of companies that, and uh, partners that work with us on that. BC Hydro is a very uh, big partner. So we we're we're doing trying to do more of that. Um, we we also you know again need financial support. I mean, I, I, I you know, I, we're a very proud organization. We, we've been self-sufficient for, for, for long, but we, I, in the way I look at it, we've, we've helped the community for a long time and now we need help in order to kind of keep, uh, keep going. So if you are able to support Science World um, and you'd like to talk to us about that, we, we'd love to talk to you because, uh, um, you know, that would be very helpful. And the other thing that we do, of course, is that uh, in the specific programs that we offer, we work with, uh, work with companies um, to, uh, again, showcase some of the, the BC ingenuity and opportunities. So we'd love to do more of that. Excellent. No, it's really good to hear. And I think you'll find that there's a lot of tech companies that like to give back in a, in a small yeah. way or maybe in a larger way, but you're such a a beloved icon for us. Uh, if we can be part of, of the solution, we want to be. Do you know what's been one of the, the most um, gratifying things for me is, I, you know, we have um, uh, have people who have been come quite successful in the whole technology space, and they've come to us and said, "Science World, you know, gave me that that start. That, that's what ignited my uh, my passion in this this area." And actually, some of them have, have become boards of directors too. So that's been really wonderful, and have have, have, have contributed, um, uh, you know, a lot of support. So uh, again, I mean when you work another funny story you know you, you mentioned I I had worked in in banking for a long time about 25 years and CEO of Coast Capital and 
when I told my four kids who were grown now, who've been through Science World uh, many, many times as youngsters, but they're all grown now. And when I told them I was uh, uh, going for the Science World uh, CEO role, they said, oh, mom, you know, that's fantastic. That is so cool. And they were going on and on and on about it. And I, was sort of, I said, well, you know, being a CEO of a financial institution wasn't that bad either, you know? And they said, oh, no, no, this is way more cool. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so... Yeah, so we're, we're, we're it's, it, you know, we're fortunate. Like, I mean, I, this can, there's nothing better than to be working with an organization where you know you can make a profound difference. And, uh, you know, that's what gets me charged up uh, and coming to work in the morning, even if I have to go to my office at my home. <laughs> Um, so just again, I would invite anyone in the chat that's got questions, uh, anyone in the audience that's got questions for Tracy, please uh, raise them in the chat. Now, David, uh, our earlier questioner is saying there are many ways to skin a dome. So you may have crowdsourced a solution here. Uh, we'll put you to the connection afterwards. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, let's not discount BC ingenuity into no. some of these problems. I would love for a BC company to solve this uh, problem for us. It's it's actually a very complicated problem. Um, there are very few uh, geodesic domes of this size in the world, and uh, that that uh, that skin that you see behind me in the picture has been on the dome. Uh, it's the original skin, um, and actually, right now, to be quite honest, it's leaking. Uh, so we we do have to get it fixed in the next uh, uh, few years because otherwise we might not be able to save it, and that's. Uh, uh, another aspect of the fundraising campaign that we're going out with as well. I think that um, it wasn't it Justin McElroy that did a ranking of of the most iconic buildings in British Columbia, and I believe Science World was top. So we I think it was. To yeah, preserve that dome. Yeah, we do. We we definitely want to preserve and augment it. And uh, uh, you know, it's it is an iconic uh, building, and um, you know, it would be it be it be an absolute tragedy if we weren't able to uh, fix it. Um, Louis asking a really interesting question in the chat. What do you think False Creek will look like in the future with the potential for tech office expansion? I mean, boy, imagine what that would look like as a tech cluster. I am so excited about this. Um, uh, I've had a number of conversations with Dick Vallette from St. Paul's uh, Foundation. Uh, you know, what is happening in East False Creek? Um, having been grown up in the banking industry, worked for HSBC and watched uh, what happened with the uh, Olympic lands and Yale Town, et cetera. You know, I, I do believe that uh, the, what's going to happen in um, East False Creek is going to be the next major transformation of this city. And we are so fortunate to be sitting in the center of it. Um, you've got you've got St. Paul's going in, the new Abcellera uh, head office. Uh, Emily Carr is already in at Columbia College. Um, this whole area is going to be transformed into a health sciences technology corridor, and we're right in the middle of it. And what I would like to be is actually uh, a, a science center that is, you know, again, in the middle of it, that is helping um, us grow the STEAM talent that we're going to need for this corridor, and um, that there's um, uh, lots of symbi symbiotic partnerships happening between ourselves and uh, the various um, you know, uh, groups and companies uh, down here. Um, I think we have an opportunity to build a world-class science center in Vancouver. It's time that we had one. You know, Vancouver, you know, arguably, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm probably gonna get some flack for this, but arguably we don't have any world-class attractions. Um, it's time for us to, to start investing in this and investing in science and STEAM and uh, you know it will be it will it, it it's time for Vancouver to for us to put a stake in the ground about the type of player we want to be in the 21st century. You know, and I again I think an iconic science center that uh, uh, you know offers all facets of of uh, science education um, is uh, something that would be that stake. Well, that's a vision I think we can all get behind. That would be. I'm working on it. <laughs> I always like to say to people, you know, the, the constant presence of some fantastic world leading tech companies, you know, when we look around and we see some of the major names that we recognize across the world, the fact that they're investing in uh, BC, they're investing in Vancouver, they see the potential of the talent, uh, that tells us there's nothing wrong with our potential. Yeah. And when we look at what Canadian athletes did, 
when they got exactly owning the podium boy i think we see nbc's tech sector uh has the future fully within its grasp so so Here's and that's what we, we need that that strategy right the, the, to you know we want to own the podium um you know we our position as the um you know pacific uh outlet to to asia is also really important and uh you know and again it's um it's a wonderful place to to live and work we do need we do have some social challenges that we have to address but um i i really believe in bc's uh, potential but we're going to have to come together as you know uh stakeholders to uh to, to really make that happen. Because there's a lot of people doing the same thing all around the world. That's it, that's it. Uh, you, in a moving stream, you forge ahead or you fall behind. So exactly. the future can be ours. Listen, this is fantastic. I see one final comment in, in the chat, which I'll just share with you. So Megan's asking the team, who can build BC's biggest umbrella? <laughs> protect the dome. What will get the I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, <laughs> that that we had not thought about that. <laughs> there you go. Well, listen, thank you again. Thank you for being so generous with your time and so frank in your comments. That's what makes these events really, really valuable. Uh, absolutely wonderful. Just one final question. Do you have any final thoughts you'd like to leave with our audience today? Well, my, my head of development would kill me if I didn't uh, reiterate that, uh, you know, if you believe in STEAM education and, and what we're doing at Science World, uh, please support us. Please support um, other uh, science attractions that are also in the same boat, the, the planetarium. These, these attractions and, and, and what we do, it, it, I mean, it's critical to sparking that uh, uh, interest early. And we know that's critical to creating that steam pipeline. So uh, uh, I'll just leave you with that. If you can support us, we'd really appreciate it. That's a wonderful call to action. Thank you. And thank you for all your remarks today. It was great. Yeah, lovely, lovely to talk to you, Jill, as always. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.